the 94 got moved over here. <coughs> got the white pipe and starter hanging down and the transmission. Now hopefully it runs in the next couple weeks. There's a block for the engine of the 94, pistons and rods, push rods, heads and intake, and some other shit. Here's the rod caps and bearings out of the 94 and the crank. I discovered one of the bearings was fun. And you can see right there how far it gone down the crankshaft. I think crank's junk. I mean, they're going to buy a used engine or take the crank out of an engine we got out back. And then get new bearings. And here's the main bearings. Caps. Here's the engine I got for the 94. So the 87 Chevy pickup. It's got about 87,000 miles on it. I got the flywheel on, I still got to put in the brand new pilot bearing and then bolt the clutch stuff on. And then once I drop it in, I got to switch the throttle body because the throttle position sensor is different. And I switched the exhaust manifold, which was a pain in the ass. These are the manifolds off the 94 engine, they have no smog holes. Whereas the 87 had smog for some reason. You'd think the newer one would have it too, but anyway. Because what happens when you take the manifolds off on mostly TBI engines is they tend to bend inward and then you, if you bolt up the middle holes, the outside ones won't line up. They'll be off by about eighth to a quarter of an inch. So we took a port of power with a ram that opened up like this and stuck it in here with a couple of metal blocks and pried them out and bolted them out. Well, otherwise, it'll go in one of these days. Still got the old engine in here for now. There's the old clutch, I think. Yeah, that's the old one. I got a good used one I'm going to put on it. There's a pilot bearing. That was almost 20 bucks. And all the extra crap. I A good hood, hood ornament didn't go with the Suburban. It's one of the very few ones I've seen that's still red, so I kept that thing. All kinds of junk up here. Also, the 94 had a uh, oil cooler that bolts on where the oil filter spins on. The 87 didn't. I swapped that on. You can see the lines there. And then the filter comes out at an angle and it takes a 3980 fram instead of a PH5. All you gotta do is take off the old filter and take out the two screws to unbolt this. This is what it screws, the filter screws onto. And the oil cooler assembly just bolts right up. Put an oil pan gasket in it because it's leaking like a son of a bitch. And she should be almost ready to rock and roll. The 87 engine also had these brackets that bolt between the motor mounts and the block. These torque brackets that bolt to the transmission to keep from breaking the transmission bell housing. Well, the 94 didn't have that because it's a manual. And then instead had spacers underneath the motor mounts that were the same thickness as this, so that would be the same motor mount. The same uh, motor mounts could be used for both setups. So I took those off. Here's a four wheeler I got for free. All it needs is new bearings in the rear end. I have a box of parts in the garage. As you can see, they didn't put it back together. It'll still move, but. I didn't ride it very fast, I just drove from the driveway back here. It needs a new battery, this one won't take a charge, but you put a battery charger on it, it'll fire right up. So hopefully we get that fixed here fairly soon.